In this video, we'll be calculating the derivative of a rational function using the limit definition of derivative. So to calculate h prime of x, what we're gonna do is take the limit as h approaches zero. And with this, remember over here, you can see the definition here, our function name is h as opposed to f in this original one. But what we need to do is plug in x plus h in for the x initially. So it'll be one over x plus h, and then subtract away the original function. And that's all over h. To simplify this down and reduce it, and to actually take this derivative, it's mostly a matter of a bunch of algebra from here on out. So we can leave the h in the denominator for now. Um, it would be more simplified if instead of two separate fractions in the numerator, we combine these together into a single fraction. To do so, we need to get a common denominator. So that common denominator is gonna have both an x and an x plus h. So the first fraction will multiply by x over x. As we multiply numerators together, we have x times one makes x and the denominators we have x times x plus h, which I'll leave as, as like that. Next, we're going to multiply the second fraction by x plus h in both numerator and denominator. So that'll leave us with x plus h in the numerator and x times x plus h in the denominator. All right, from here, we can go ahead and combine these together over that common denominator. So the limit comes along, the h comes along from here. The common denominator x times x plus h is the denominator, but then we have x minus x minus h. And it's important to notice um, because we have two terms in that second um, fraction, that negative is going to get distributed to both of these terms. It's an easy place to kind of forget about. All right, now that we've got them into a single fraction, we can combine like terms. We have x minus x. Those will combine together and give us zero x's. Next, we still have the limit as h approaches zero. h in the denominator. But now a little fraction up in the numerator, we have negative h over x times x plus h. All right, at this point, we have a fraction inside of a fraction. And I'm actually gonna visualize this as being a separate little fraction in the denominator with h over one. Now, we don't wanna have fractions left inside of fractions. So what we can do is we can multiply both numerator and denominator by one over h as long as we multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing, that's like multiplying by one. And why I chose one over h is because I wanted to have h times one over h would create a one in our denominator. So with that, we have the limit as h approaches zero. Some of you may have learned this as keep change flip. It's kind of what's going on behind the scenes here. And that works if you want to visualize it that way. But I'm going to Take what's left in the numerator, negative h over x times x plus h multiplied by one over h. As I do that multiplying, what's gonna happen is we have an h in the numerator and an h in the denominator, which create a one. So we can basically get rid of those, but that'll leave us with negative one in the numerator over x times x plus h in the denominator. From there, we can plug in zero for our h. We couldn't do it initially. If you kind of look back, we couldn't plug in zero for h here because dividing by zero is not okay. Couldn't plug it in until we had gotten to this point where our h is gone from the denominator. We had canceled it out right here. So to finish this up, what we'll do is we'll plug in zero for our h. So we have negative one over x times x plus zero, which makes negative one over x times x will make x squared, and there's our derivative. Now, if we needed to evaluate this at a specific value, say you were looking for the slope of the tangent line at an x value of two, what you could do is you could simply plug in a two for your x and calculate the slope of the tangent line at that given value for x. Um, the same thing would work if we were given any other x value, um, plug in whatever number is given to you into this derivative, and there you get the slope of the tangent line. All right, hope this helps. See you next time.